It's young me. Hey guys, what's up? It's Debbie and I'm back with another video. So if you guys could not tell by the title, you can tell by my attire <laughs> that today's video is going to be another Hooters video. I have been contemplating making this video for ever since I quit Hooters. <laughs> but I did not want to get any not per se backlash because I don't really care about backlash. I'm more, <laughs> this is stupid, but I'm more concerned about one of the girls from Hooters like finding my channel <laughs> and watching it and taking it the wrong way. And like my problems was not really with any of the girls. So I would just like to like clarify that now. So if any of you are watching this, I love you and miss you. <laughs> No, but let's get into it. So the tea is boiling, you guys. The tea is boiling. Why? Because it's time to air out Hooters dirty laundry. I'm just kidding. Like that sounds very intense, but it's not gonna be that intense, I promise. So I wrote down like some notes just because there is so much stuff that happened to me in the short period of time that I worked there and I want to try to cover as many points as I can um yeah man it's been a journey it it just it scarred me in food like waitressing for life like I'm applying to jobs right now I actually just got two job offers yesterday so after today I will probably accept one of them um but applying for jobs like my friend got a job at a bar and she was like come work with me like do this do that I was like I can't I was like Hooters just gave me PTSD like I cannot do it I will not do it I refuse to do it and it's crazy because I had waitressed one time before Hooters at a like small town restaurant I absolutely loved it and when I first started at Hooters, I loved it. Like, don't get me wrong, like, I loved it. And I don't really know, like, where things went south. But when I first started, I loved it. I really did. So, as you guys know, story time means we're gonna smoke. So, I'll try to cut out me, like, breathing it in since that, like, annoys you guys or whatever. But I don't know how you watch Weed Tube if you're gonna, like, complain about the noises when people smoke. That's confusing to me. But hey, what do I know? So, yeah, so let's go back to day one. So, when I first started at Hooters, I really liked it. All the girls were like really nice to me, but they weren't like overly nice to where they're like in your face and you're like, oh, I don't want to be your friend because like you're trying too hard to be my friend. Like, that means something's wrong. Like, no. Like, everyone was like nice and cordial, very welcoming. And I was like, wow, I love this. Like, this is not what I was expecting. I was expecting to have, like, a shit ton of beef with all the girls, but I didn't. Like, all the girls I met were super nice. And I worked multiple shifts, and I was working with different people every shift. And I remember, like, they put me on a Thursday, and I think she did this on purpose. But, like, if you know me, you know, like, yeah, I'm white. But, like... I don't associate with the whites like you guys can give me backlash for that or whatever but I don't like I'm not I'm country don't get me wrong I am but I do not associate with the whites like I just don't <laughs> you just I don't know I don't know I just don't so she put me on a Thursday shift and I did not know this because it was my first week but Thursday is like this sounds bad and you guys I'm not coming for anyone I'm just telling you like it is and I noticed this and I think that it's very unfair to girls of color that work at Hooters and you might notice this at different locations because I was actually watching videos um before I started working at Hooters and I noticed this and I was like damn like everyone's story that was like a woman of color that worked at Hooters like it was like horrific like people treat them like they're aliens basically so I noticed on Thursday when it was like my first Thursday shift it was nothing but girls of color working and I was like okay 
whatever like this is my kind of crowd <laughs> like I was cool with it and if I was literally I was the only white girl so I was like okay that's like weird like why me <laughs> and I just thought at first I thought it was just how the scheduling laid out I didn't really like put that much thought to it like I noticed it but I was like eh, whatever like it is what it is like they must just work well together and so the girls were really nice I got along with all of them um I mean of course they were like talking in their friend groups or whatever but they were ordering Starbucks and they offered to get me something so you know I said yes to Starbucks so yeah so um I have started talking to one of the girls we will name her because she's going to be a key part in this story I'm going to write it down so I can remember we're going to name her Kathleen. That's what we're going to name her, Kathleen. Okay. There's a reason why I chose that name, but you guys will never know. Okay, so Kathleen was very nice to me. You know, we talked. We hung out a little bit. I liked her personality. It fit mine. Okay? So that happened. Everything was good, you know? Whatever. Well, during that shift, of course, Hooters has, like, a crap ton of regulars. So, during that shift, I had, and this isn't really anything to do with Hooters in general. It more has to do with the customers of Hooters that were coming in. So, they had a lot of regulars, obviously, and there was, like, three or four regulars that came in that day. And people were telling me that they specifically wanted to sit with me. And I was like, that's weird. I've been here like two days. Like, why do they want to sit with me? So I was like, okay, whatever. Like, I'll take them. Like, I wanted tables because they were giving me small sections because I was new. And they didn't know that I was a good waitress. <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool. Like, I'll take what I can get. So then I was like talking to these people. When I tell you they were white, like supremacy people like would not sit with any of the dark girls like would not like shit was crazy to me and I was like damn there's really still people in the world like this okay but you know whatever like I just listen to them talk like sit there like yeah 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 uh-huh 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 okay yeah yeah let me get your food <laughs> like you had to listen to it you had to be nice but like that stuff was hard for me to listen to I was like Damn, like I really just want to cuss this guy out like you can't just like judge people like that like it really bothered me but I was like whatever I shook it off paid him out etc etc and I had went up to Kathleen and I like told her I was like oh my god like do you guys go through this on the regular and she was like yeah she was like there's like a lot of customers that come in here that just like hate black people and will not like sit with us and I was like like, I could not. I was like, that is crazy. Like, people come in here and you guys just, like, take that. She was like, we don't have any option. I was like, I mean, I know, but, like, what? I was like, well, I wouldn't want those customers anyways because they're not worth the time of day. You know. So that, that happened. That was crazy to me. But I was like, okay, you know, whatever. I understand I'm gonna come in contact with a lot of different people like when I work in a environment like this so whatever shook it off moved on everything was going good okay there was a manager there we're gonna name her Karen because she's very much so a Karen meme so Karen our manager super nice lady when I first started she was so nice to me and I was like bragging to my boyfriend I was like oh my god like our manager's a girl like she's so nice like she told us like if guys are inappropriate like we can just come and tell her like she'll kick them out like no big deal blah blah blah, blah. no she's a liar she is a liar okay okay nothing really in particular happened to me except this one time and it was my own fault because I messed up I let my friends bad judgment cloud my judgment and I messed up and I don't think I ever brought it to her attention but I think another girl did and she like didn't really stick up for me because I 
went against one of the rules in the handbook, which I shouldn't have done. But, like, the whole situation was messed up and she should have had my side, I felt like, regardless of if I didn't listen to the handbook or whatever. Like, she could have written me up for that but still taken my side. Like, you know what I mean? I'll explain the situation in a little bit. But, yeah, things were going good. I was working a lot of shifts. Um, they were giving me the crappy sections. But it was what it was. I understand anywhere you go, like, the more seasoned people are always going to have more benefits than you at first until you get good at what you're doing or, like, been there for a while. Like, establish yourself. So, that didn't bother me. I'm a pretty laid-back person when it comes to jobs because I understand what to expect. I usually typically understand the ups and downs, and I don't typically let it bother me like that, I don't feel like. So, yeah. So then, um... I don't really know where stuff started going south, but Karen started, like, she just did, like, a whole 360 and turned into, like, this nightmare, okay? Like, it was bad. So, and I've had really bad bosses before. Like, I've worked a lot of jobs, and I've had bad bosses before. I've had great bosses before, you know? And it really does, like change my perspective on the job like I can work a horrible job if the management is good and I think that goes for like every company honestly but I would sit in the office and because we were not allowed to be on our phones unless we were in the office and we could only be in there for like five minutes check your phone send a text and like then you had to be back out on the floor so, and we did not get breaks. Like, you just had to order food and, like, shove it down your throat in between tables. So, that was annoying. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't really remember where stuff went south. But I do remember I would, like, sit in the office. Karen would sit there and, like, talk crap about the other girls. And I was just like, okay. I don't really know anyone, so I'm not going to, like, say anything, but I was like, you know, whatever. She wasn't, per se, talking to me, but she was talking to, like, like, there was another manager that worked behind the bar as well, and, like, she was, she was younger. She was really nice. I, I liked her, but, um, she would, like, talk a lot of crap about the girls to the other manager. I would just be sitting in there. I was like, okay, just, like, soaking it all in, like, okay, I see how you are. So, and I guess that made me, like, be more cautious, and maybe that's where I went wrong. So, I, like, wasn't as, like, when I like a manager, like, I'm not, like, a butt kisser, but I want to help them. Like, I, I genuinely just want to help them, like, make their jobs easier, like, just make the whole flow of work better. So, I guess, like, once I realized, like, she was just talking crap about all these girls that she was so nice to their face, I was just like, mm, okay. So, I, like, wasn't really for her as much. And I remember one time I was, like, in the hall, like, behind the thing. No, none of the customers could see me, but I, like, pulled out my phone. Someone had texted me. I don't, I don't know if it was my boyfriend or my family or what, but, like, they were trying to tell me, I don't know if it was, like, important news or, like, just exciting or, like, what. And I was, like, reading the message, and she came from behind, like, around the corner. She was, like, phone. I was like okay so I gave her my phone and she locked my phone and hid it in the break room and I had this other friend who worked there we're gonna name her Alyssa just writing that down so I can remember okay so I had this other friend that I had met there and we had like become close we started hanging out outside of work and me, her, me, Alyssa, and Kathleen were, like, close. Like, all three of us were hanging out together. So, um, I remember, like, Alyssa was, like, trying to, like, send me something or something on my phone. I was like, yeah, I don't have it. Like, Karen took it. And she was like, oh, well, we can go in the office and, like, get it out. And I was like, 
okay but like i don't want karen to find out i was like like karen don't get mad at me like i don't want to get in trouble like i don't want her to write me up blah blah blah, blah. And she was like, no, I got it. I do it all the time. And I was like, okay, Alyssa. So she goes in the office. She gets my phone. She brings it to me. Manager never noticed. So I just didn't pull it out the rest of the day. And then, um, like, Christmas started coming around. And her boyfriend had bought her a, it looked like a little jail cell. And it had, like, a password on it. And you could put people's phones in it and lock them on a timer. So she would literally take our phones and lock them in there. And like, she made a point to like show everyone this jail cell. Like she was so proud of it. And she was like, now I'm going to lock all your phones in here for if I catch you on them and blah, 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 blah. And, and at, if it becomes a big problem, like at the beginning of the shift, everyone's just going to have to turn their phones in. I'm going to lock it in this box and you won't get it till the end of your shift. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what the heck? And she was like, what the heck? So I had two phones at the time. She didn't know that. So I would leave one in my bag in my break room and I would go back there and check it because she wasn't really like ever in the break room. And then I would just keep the other one in my pouch. So if she caught me on it, she could put it up. But like all my messages sent to both phones. So like if she put that one up, I would just like go check my other one like in between tables. So yeah, I got used to the phone thing. Shook it off. I was like, whatever, I can deal with this. Not a big deal. Okay. Well, then one of the girls was talking about quitting. And she was one of the Hooters calendar girls. And she had been there for, I think she said, like, two or three years. Like, she had been there a while. I could be wrong. Couldn't have been that long. But she was there for a while. So, she was, um, I guess, talking to the manager about, um, like, quitting or changing her availability or something. I don't really know what happened. But I think maybe she joked about becoming a stripper or something. Because we were in quarantine like the money wasn't great but it wasn't bad like we would have like especially on the weekend like you would make money but like during the week it was like slow and very good but she I guess was trying to change her availability or whatever and the manager had made a comment to her I don't know what I, I just can't remember what it was about but it was something along the lines of like you shouldn't be throwing your pussy around like that or something I don't know it was weird but when the girl told me I was like she said that to you and she was like yeah and I was like what the fuck? so like things were just like building up at this point and I was like damn this lady is like easy and then this is where I drew the line okay so <clears throat> There was this cook, and all the girls were like obsessed with him. Thought he was so cute. Blah, blah, blah. Was he the most attractive guy that worked in the kitchen? Yes. Was he like all that? No, he was not. So he was messing with one of the girls in Hooters. I'm not gonna say who, but he was messing with one of the girls and I don't know if they were like a thing or what but he was in a rough situation he did not have a car um yeah he just he was in a bad position and um it was cold outside so he had asked me one day he was like hey because everyone knows I smoke he was like would it be cool, like, if I smoke in your whip real quick so I don't gotta smoke outside in the cold? And I was like, it was, like, cold and dark outside, and I didn't want to be mean. So I was like, yeah, that's cool. Like, so I gave him my keys. I was like, don't touch anything in my car. Like, get in the passenger seat, smoke, and get out. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, no problem. Like, I got you. And he didn't mess with nothing. Like, he just got in my car, smoked, and came back in. Well... I think Thanksgiving came around. We were understaffed. 
it was crazy, okay? It was so stressful coming to work. The whole entire ship was just stressful as much. Like, everyone was, like, going off on each other. The food was messed up. It was just, it was cool. So, he, um, he asked if he could smoke in my car again, I think. Or he got to work before me, and I was pulling up, and I think he, like, texted me and was like, hey, like, when are you working today? And I was like, yeah, I'm about to come in now. And he was like, okay, well, like, when you get here, like, could you just, like, drop your keys off with me so I can smoke real quick? He was like, I'm about to get a break. Well, kitchen gets a break. We don't. So I was like, yeah, that's cool. Like, whatever. So as I'm walking in, he was standing outside with Karen. And I was like, shit, like, I probably shouldn't give him my keys right now. But, like, I did anyways. Because I wasn't doing nothing wrong. Like, so, I just, like, handed him my keys. And he was, like, appreciate it. And I was like, yeah, no problem. And I, like, walked inside. Well, a few days later, and I could tell that Karen, like, had a weird vibe with me that day. And I was like she's gonna say something like I know she is so like a few days went by none of the girls like none of them cared I'm pretty sure they knew what he was doing so they were just like whatever like so because like half the girls smoked too so like they knew so like nobody was worried about it and then I remember she like pulled me in the office one day and she was like so we need to talk like okay about what she's like you and and she said his initials and I was like who is that and she was like then she said his name and I was like what and she was like well there's been some rumors that y'all are like messing around and I was like what I was like no there's not and she was like trying to say that there was and like girls were asking her about it I was like who and she like didn't say nothing I was like okay well for your information I was like I come to work to make money and pay my bills and worry about myself I don't care about what nobody says at work I don't care about what anyone thinks I was like I literally come here to make money like this is not my group of like hang out buddies like I don't care I was like I'm here for money and that's it I was like I don't need no extra relationships like I'm not worried about nobody and she was like oh well, I'm just telling you what people are saying I want to look out for you because typically when things happen like that then girls can tend to argue and I just don't want any drama blah blah blah, blah. but I'm like you're the one trying to make drama like I let him smoke in my car but I can't tell her that because then he can get fired so I'm just like like you're trying to start drama for what so I was just like okay whatever like are you done and she was like yeah I was like okay so I left I was like that like pissed me off so bad like what are you worried about so then I went around and I asked the girls I was like hey like do y'all have a problem with me letting him smoke in my car and everyone's like I don't give a shit like what does that got to do with me? Like, I was like, exactly. Like, nobody cared. Like, everyone was like, she's literally just trying to, like, start drama. I was like, I know. Like, for what? Like, you're a grown woman trying to start drama with, like, 20-year-olds. For what? It was just so annoying. So, I was like, okay, whatever. So, then, um, I guess she felt some type of way about me and questioning her about that because... Like, I just don't understand it. So, then, um, we came in and we do jump start before every shift, which is where, like, they tell you the specials for the day, like, if we're out of anything, and then, like, what our game plan is, like, if any, if any games are going to be playing that we have to have on the TV and, like, all that stuff. So, I come in for jump start one day, as I always do every day, okay? I'm like standing like behind because I was kind of I got there kind of late I guess she was mad because I got there late but I was like standing behind the girls because we do it in the office and it's like small we can't all fit in there so like sometimes we're like all like piled up so 
so I was like standing in the back and she goes you stink really bad and everyone just like turns and looks at me and I'm like just standing there awkwardly in the middle in the back I'm like sorry like I come in here after I smoke every single day like what is the problem like it's literally legal like what and she goes um yeah you can just go home I was like cool so I picked up my bag and I walked out I was like no fuck so that made me really mad okay so I come back to work or whatever work throughout Christmas that way I had money for Christmas presents and all that but that made me mad so when I came in my next shift the other manager is like hey Karen wants to see you in the office and I already knew she was either gonna fire me or write me up so I was like okay so I'll go in there and she's like you're such a good worker, like, you're just so good, like, I don't know why you do that, like, um, I'm gonna have to write you up, like, and I'm doing you a favor, because in the handbook, it would tell me to fire you, blah, 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 and I was like, okay, she's like, okay, just sign here, I was like, okay, so I'm like signing it, she's like, you're so good, like, I don't want to have to let you go, like, I don't know why you're, like, acting like this, like, you were so good when you first started, I was just like, okay, are you done? She was like, yeah, I was like, okay, walked out, worked my shift, then Christmas came around, and this girl came in on Christmas, she had slept in late, and people were trying to call her, but she was asleep, so... Then she comes in like I think like an hour or two late and she's like running in the door like hair not done like no makeup on but like she had all her stuff with her to like get ready she like ran in the door she was like oh my god I'm so so sorry like I overslept like I'm so sorry my alarm didn't go off like I'm so sorry like just so apologetic and Karen fired her like right then and there and she was like crying like she had been there for a while and she loved her she was like crying i felt so bad i was like damn she just got fired on christmas like why would you do that to someone so that was really messed up so after she did that like me and all the girls were just like yeah like she really don't care about none of us like that's crazy and she would like threaten to fire people all the freaking time. It was just like so freaking much. So then like me and Kathleen and uh, um, Alyssa hung out like literally this whole time. <clears throat> and we were like getting really close. And then <sighs> Kathleen felt like me and Alyssa were singling her out and not hanging out with her and like excluding her that's not the case because we texted her and invited her to everything and she was always either busy with like school or like whatever else so like we were like what the fuck because we send you an invite everywhere and you never come to nothing like how are we like excluding you so we were like annoyed about that so we kind of just stopped talking to her um after that because Alyssa was in a car wreck and Kathleen like pretty much wasn't helping her like when she was asking her like take her to doctor appointments and shit like she was not helping her but then she would come to work and be like oh yeah you probably need to take her to the doctor tonight and I was like so like I would take her but we just stopped talking to her after that because I was like, girl, you're like all over the place. So, yeah. So then I would come to work and they kept putting me on shifts with her and it was like so awkward. Like, and after like getting written up and like 
going to work and like having that offer tension, I was like, oh my god, like I hate it here. Like I just didn't do it. <laughs> so I just stopped going to work altogether. But she was trying to tell people that she ran me out. But no, like it was so many things building up to this point, and I was just over it, like so bad. So yeah, that was my experience and why I quit Hooters. Um, yeah, crazy. I don't know, all over the place. I probably left some stuff out, but it was just so much and I was trying to remember all of it. Like, it's crazy. But if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Also leave a comment down below on some videos you would like to see me do and I will do well, I will try to do them for you guys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.